what went into the decision uh, to, to hold him out in the second half? Uh, I think, you know, I haven't really had a chance to, to see him post game yet, Mike, uh, or, or really talk to the trainers yet. Uh, I don't think it's anything uh, too, too serious. Uh, I went up to Nicola as he was warming up at halftime. How do you feel? Um, he says it feels a little weak, and I just shut him down. Sure. Uh, I took the decision. It's not his decision to make. Uh, Nicola's a tough kid. We've seen him time and time again play through injuries. Uh, never sit out. Um, second out of back to back, he's far too important for this team uh, for us to risk him being out there if he's not feeling confident about it. So set him down. Uh, I really loved them with our fight in that second half. I thought our guys fought and, uh, you know, we just couldn't score the ball. You know, obviously our defense wasn't great. They're a good team. Defended the three point line really well, but gave up 60 in our paint. But, you know, without Nicola, no Jamal, uh, you know, Michael struggled to make shots tonight. <laughs> you know, Will Barton was terrific. I thought Monty had his best game of the season. So even though it was a loss, you know, second round of back-to-back injuries, uh, I'm proud of our group. I was going to ask about the fight. What, what specifically is from Will, Aaron, or, or Monte, what, what stood out amongst that fight that, that you saw in the second half? Yeah, I mean, just that we didn't, you know, like uh, we've seen it before, so you kind of expect it. And I reminded our guys, and we've come into this same – building and one with seven players. Um, so, okay, Nicole was out. Jamal and Vlad go back in Denver. We have more than enough, man. Like, and uh, so I just like the fact that no one dropped their head. No one quit. There was no woe is me. You know, uh, I think one of the worst things in the world is when people feel sorry for themselves. I hate that. And we don't have that. It's not part of our DNA. Our guys competed. You know, I, I think a couple of crucial stretches in the, the game tonight, uh, end of the first quarter, 7-0 Utah. Start of the second quarter, 7-0 Utah, 14-0 run. I got to figure the bench out. Uh, our bench is not uh, where it needs to be. Shorten the rotation, whatever that means. Um, and then, obviously, I think midway through the fourth quarter, early in the fourth quarter, they went on a 22-8 run. Uh, and couldn't score, uh, couldn't get stops, and we just couldn't over overcome that. But uh, I thought Will attacking getting to the basket, making plays, not being afraid. Same thing with Monte. Aaron Gordon in the first half was, was if we can like put that Aaron Gordon and, and bring it out every night, that aggressive attacking Aaron Gordon, man, that was fun to watch. Uh, so I thought Aaron Gordon played a, a really good game as well. Uh, but again, I think just our bench was at scores 42 to 13. Uh, so we got to figure out uh, what we can do to help, help, help ourselves out in that regard. How uh, tough was it? and go there in the fourth quarter when they were making their runs uh, getting a little bit of room between you and them. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what makes them so so tough is that uh, they will have at times four playmaking guards, Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Joe Ingles, Jordan Clarkson, and you have a arguably one of the best screen setters and rollers in the NBA. Now, everybody always talks about Rudy Gobert, the defensive player, rightfully so, uh, but uh, I think his importance to their offense is often understated. Uh, the guy puts, he sets great screens um, and he puts so much pressure on your rim and he's a big target. And obviously he made his free throws in the second half, which was uh, uh, made it even a little, a little bit more difficult. So tip your cap, man, division loss, you know, back-to-back -back losses for us. We'll go home uh, and try to get ready for Dallas uh, come Friday night. Michael, speaking of the fight, did, did you appreciate that uh, Jamichael wanted to mix it up? Um, or that wasn't willing to roll over in that instance. Yeah, no, the funny thing about it, I haven't seen the replay, and I was oblivious to it. And I looked up and I saw a skirmish, and uh, you know, I ran right over to it to try to break it up before anything kind of uh, got out of control. Um, so I don't know what precipitated that. Um, I always love our guys to have a fight mentality, not to get into a fight, but a fight mentality where we're not going to back down from anybody. And uh, Jermichael Green doesn't have to show me that. I know that about him. Uh, he's a guy that I would love to be, uh, I would want in my foxhole. You know, he, he's, a, he's a tough dude, and I don't care who's over there. He's never going to back down. So uh, I know J. Mike has my back, and I will always have his back. Two quick ones on the Zoom. Go ahead, Matt Moore. Michael, you mentioned shortening the rotation to help fix the bench issues, both uh, Aaron and Will, and then MPJ has stretches with the bench. 
when you watch the offense, does it feel like it's more the ability to, to get downhill and create offense rather than trying to having guys that can finish? What do you think are the, the issues specifically with the bench's offense? Well, I know going into the game tonight, I believe uh, our, our, our bench unit was a minus 27 in the first three games. And tonight, obviously, those numbers only moved in the wrong direction. So I think it's everything. Uh, that group is having a hard time scoring. We only got 13 points tonight. Uh, they're having a hard time getting stops. Um, it, it's just a little bit of everything right now. So uh, I did that in Phoenix. You know, I know Austin didn't play. It's not. I think it's important for me to state this. Um, that that second unit is not struggling because of Austin Rivers. Now, he was the one guy that didn't play in the second half tonight and against Phoenix. Uh, it's just because I'm trying to keep Michael or Will on the floor. And that, that, that just leads to that. So it, it's not any one person's fault. It's collectively. And it's not just on the players. It's also on me finding a way to help that group out uh, because this has been uh, fairly consistent through this early season. Uh, so we'll watch the film, Matt. We'll look at it and I kind of identify the, the main areas of concern with why we're struggling with our bench. Last one, home, Young Mizzou with ESPN. Hey, Michael. Um, sorry if I missed this, but will Jokic go get additional testing? And also, it looked like when you talked to him at halftime, it looked like Jokic was trying to convince you to uh, let him stay in the game. Uh, I'm sure, you know, our medical staff home is, uh, is always very, very thorough. Um, so if additional testing is required, I'm sure that we will um, do everything to make sure he is healthy and fine. Um, but I, I have not been given that word yet, so I can't speak out of turn. Uh, but I just know how thorough our group is. Um, and what I've learned about Nicola is uh, if, if you leave it up to Nicola, you know, he, you know he's, he's going to play. He's going to play every game. And, and so sometimes I have to make decisions for him. And it made no sense for me when he told me that it feels a little weak for him to go out there and play in the second half. Um, and that's for any play, not just because Nicola Jokic, MVP. Um, I don't care if it's, you know, Zeke Naji or, or Marcus Howard or Peter Cornelly. Uh, you know, I think we have the same level of care and concern for all of our guys. And it just didn't make any sense for having Nicola to go out there in the second night of a back to back uh, and risk doing any further damage. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it.